be making some pita bread because we're having lentils tonight and I'm gonna be using the recipe from The Secrets of a Jewish Baker. So let's get going. The first thing we need to do is grind some wheat flour because this is a half and half recipe. All right, so for this recipe, I need two cups of whole wheat flour. It says preferably stone ground, which is what I have. Um, so for the wheat berries, I'm using hard white wheat and I am going to be grinding about a cup and a half um, because I want to have a little bit extra just in case. Um, also, I'm going to be sifting it is another reason why I'm going to um, do some extra. All right, so we got our wheat flour ground. Now we're going to just use a hand crank sifter and sift it out most of the bran because we found that we just don't like it completely whole wheat we prefer it sifted okay. we have our whole wheat flour ground now let's measure out our water and yeast so we're gonna do two cups of warm water and I'm gonna warm that up in the microwave um, we want warm water so that the yeast activates but you don't want it too hot um, so I'm just gonna warm up two cups for about 30 seconds all right, we got our water warmed up. Here's our jar of yeast. Um, I, if you don't already, if you buy yeast in bulk like I do, I highly suggest keeping open the open brick in a jar um, in your fridge or in a Ziploc bag in the fridge. Um, and then any unopened bricks, just put them in the freezer, they last forever. Um, so we're gonna do a tablespoon and a half of yeast. We're just actually not going to do that yet. So I was getting ahead of myself. We are going, we're going to use our mixing bowl. Since we are going to be mixing this with a stand mixer, or kneading this with a stand mixer, we're going to use the mixing bowl. Pour our water in, and then again a tablespoon and a half of yeast. So one, dos, tres. Okay, got our yeast in. We'll put the jar back in the fridge, and we'll let that sit for five minutes, and then we'll be back. Okay, it is sat for five minutes and is all nice and mixed in there. And now we are going to add the olive oil and flour and salt. So let's grab the olive oil. So this calls for a quarter cup of olive oil. the dough is sticky. Um, remove and scrape the beater and insert the dough hook and mix for 8 to 10 minutes at first speed. More flour can be added in small amounts, but this should be a soft dough. 
so, um, and if my mixer can handle it, which it usually can, I can mix it at second speed for the last two minutes of mixing, um, to strengthen the glutens. Alright, and then we will, um, let it rise and do all the shaping. So first, let's get it to the 8 to 10 minute point. I'm gonna be adding some flour here. Let me go grab that. So one of the best things that I bought, and I grew up with them, but they were Tupperware. I don't have that. Um, but I got these on Amazon. Is sets of quarter cup scoops, not like the whole measuring array, like just quarter cup. And I keep them in all of my bulk bins. So my wheat, each wheat has their own, or each grain has their own, each flour has their own, each sugar has their own. It, it makes life so much easier because you can measure almost any amount out with a quarter cup scoop. So with this um, recipe, it calls for three, two, three, let's see, three to four cups of all-purpose flour. So this is the part where you get the two, four. Um, and that's going to depend on how thirsty your flowers are, how um, accurately you measure your liquid, and how humid or dry it is in your house. So we're making this in the winter. Um, I haven't really made this too much. This is actually my second time, like, recently making it. Um, the last time was a long time ago, and I don't even know if I used this recipe. And I'm hoping you guys can hear me over the next all right, I'm gonna let this mix and I'll come back when it works to the next step. You can hear me over the mixer, it's going behind me and I am going to set my phone timer for eight minutes. So timer, and I'm gonna go eight minutes, whoops. Cause it's coming away from the sides now and that'll go off and then I'll come back and change it to second speed for the last two minutes. But right now, what I wanna do is I wanna get our rising bowl ready. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm just using this bowl. Um, I've switched from letting it rise in the stand mixer bowl because I tend to either need it or just want it clean. Um, also, a lot of recipes, they, call, they recommend using a greased bowl and that's what we're gonna do. So I bought this um, sprayer, olive oil sprayer or oil sprayer off of Amazon and it's actually kind of awesome and you use a lot less oil and I like it. So sprayer, bowl. Misted it all in. I will say that this mister is more of a streamer, but it does the job that you want it to do. If you really want like this fine mist, um, you really need an aerosol can. That's, this is really not going to do it. Um, but I really have enjoyed using this. I've been using it when I'm greasing pans for cooking, bowls for baking, everything. It's, it's been awesome. All right. I'm going to wait for my timer to go off and I'll come back when we're transferring to our Okay, our dough has been kneaded, and we'll just take out the hook. And we're going to transfer it into our oil bowl. should be doubled in size in about an hour so we'll come back to you guys in an hour and we will show you how to do the second rise but first plastic wrap
could also use like if you have bees wrap or things like that you could use um i do i have come to like to use the plastic wrap um because it keeps the moisture in and i've had a problem with that um lately um at least at this house um i didn't used to have the problem where it would get uh, film over the top but here it seems to and we'll get a tea towel put it over i don't know why i do the tea towel i just do um turn on the light and we're just putting it onto the middle rack in our oven put the light on and shutting the door and that will give it just enough warmth to rise and we'll come back to you when that's done it is an hour later and we've taken this out of the oven this is what we have doubled in size it has doubled in size and we're ready for the second step all right so our next step is to divide our dough into 12 equal pieces all right so we're gonna get our kitchen scale we're gonna tear it to the uh bowl which i've already done so it's 43 ish ounces so quick math so actually we have 43.45 divided by 12 3.6 is how much we're going to make each one. Take that out. We don't need that. And we're going to make 3.6 ounce balls. We're going to make these balls. And then they are going to rest. Um, I'm going to cover them with a tea towel, a damp tea towel, and let them rise for um, 15 minutes. And then we'll come back to them. silicone baking mats um these are kind of the bomb if i'm being honest um definitely recommend them um and if you're in the market the amazon brand is just as fun, as good as name brands um but seriously they have been amazing because things get back baked onto oven sheets all the time and if you don't have anything lining the sheet, it can be a pain to scrape off. Not so with these, because you just can pick up the sheet, kind of wiggle it around, and everything comes off. Halfway there. one that's a little bit big um but otherwise totally cool and we'll just cover these with some more plastic wrap you could also use a damp tea towel i'm just going to use plastic wrap okay guys so these are going to it for 15 minutes to rise and rest and now we're getting close to being able to bake these off so since we're baking on a pizza stone we're gonna go ahead and turn the oven to 500 degrees 
and get that stone preheated because we want that stone as hot as possible to get a good bake. All right, so it's been 15 minutes and we have allowed them to rest. I'm just gonna take out all this plastic. So now what we need to do is we want to roll them out to about a quarter inch thick and I'm going to grab some more mats for this. Also going to grab some cornmeal just to dust these to make everything again not stick. Pita has become a really easy bread to make, I've discovered. And don't know why it took me so long to make it again. I know I made it when I was a teenager, so. Don't know. Goes great with our vegetarian lentil dish that we've been. These are almost all flattened out and I should have kept that that plastic maybe I can salvage some of it so these are going to be covered again and left to set for about 15 another 15 minutes so these definitely aren't super big pitas but Job. Okay, it has been another 15 minutes and we are ready to go. So we'll be baking these two at a time in a 500 degree oven on a pizza stove. You can also bake them on a regular baking sheet that is preheated, but you definitely want to have it preheated. So I'm going to go ahead and set these in. So those are going to bake in there for 10 minutes and we want to make sure we keep the oven door closed and I don't really have a see-through oven so we can't watch them but they do puff up in the oven which is really cool and I'll come back and show you what they look like when they're all done. And we have our first two out of the oven and they are hot but they look delicious and we will crack one open in a little bit and see how they look inside yay so i just put another batch in i have more to go and I'll, when i get all those done i will will crack probably the first ones that were out open um one thing that i do recommend is using a towel and then when you can you can stack them just fold it over and stack another and fold it over so you can have them cool stacked um, and also any extra moisture is absor absorbed by the towel okay they are all baked and out of the oven they smell delicious they look 
pretty awesome too. Let's go to one of the first ones we made, so it's cooler, and let's break it open. All right. Bendy. And there we go. So we could put our fingers in there and open it up to make a pita pocket. Or just eat it as is. Mm, delicious. And so that is how I make pita bread. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them for me below. And I will get back to you. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of what we do around the homestead and what we're doing and making, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, guys, bye.